Repeated explosions in Russian cities. Fifth attack on Russian industrial zones in one week. The number of people who lost their lives continues to increase day by day. Another high Mars attack from Ukrainian forces. The set of military equipment of Russian army was completely destroyed. Russian sources say the losses were very high. The attacks on Russian headquarters continued for 24 hours. The intensity of trench warfare on the Eastern Front increased significantly. In the process, the entire Russian tank unit was destroyed. Trapped Russian tanks self-destructed. While Moscow continued to ship to the front line, Putin began preparations to launch an operation in Kiev. The first shipments between Iran and Russia have been completed. On the other hand, great activity started in the east of Korsan. The first target of Ukrainian army may be the Southern Front. Crimean operations are pretty close. The Kremlin reacted very harshly to the losses. Leaders make very harsh statements. Great progress continues on the front line. The war has moved to Russian territory. The number of shipments sent to the Eastern Front has decreased considerably. The tension is higher than ever. In the evening, consecutive explosions occurred in the Bryansk and Kursk regions of Russia. Clashes continued throughout the day on the Eastern Front. In this process, it was stated that Ukrainian army carried out attacks with rockets and missiles. A large number of Himmer and Moore's rocket systems were deployed very close to the front line. With the start of the operations, Ukrainian army targeted three critical areas. The first attack was carried out in the Kursk region of Russia. According to the videos, industrial facilities, natural gas and power plants in the region were attacked with missiles. Due to the explosion of the natural gas power plant, the intensity of the explosions in the region increased considerably. Russian army began to have difficulties in sending spare parts and equipment to the borderline. Russian industrial facilities on the borderline have been attacked one after the other for a week. As a result of the attacks, engineering equipment and construction machinery became unusable. Moscow needs to place more defense systems in the regions because Russian army was able to repair damaged armored vehicles, tanks and weapons in these industrial facilities located on the borderline. In addition, spare parts are produced for many damaged armored vehicles in these industrial facilities. Most of the industrial facilities were damaged, but the infrastructure facilities that became unusable affected all the military facilities in the region. Shortly after the explosions in Kursk, two explosions were heard in the Belgorod region. The Ukrainian army destroyed one ammunition depot and one spare parts production facility in the Belgorod region. According to the published videos, it is thought that the attacks were carried out with rocket systems. Russian military press service confirmed that the attacks were carried out by Ukraine. The number of attacks continues to increase day by day. Missile attacks began to create major logistical problems for the Russian army. Russian army also wants to prolong the preparation process by launching attacks on infrastructure facilities located on Ukrainian territory. Both Kiev and Moscow ordered a strategic attack. We know that Russian army frequently carries out attacks with missiles, because the number of ammunition sent to the Russian artillery units decreased considerably. With the decrease in the number of new generation missiles, Moscow turned its face to Iran. In line with the agreements between Iran and Moscow, new unmanned aerial vehicles began to be sent to Russia. Moscow thinks that it can solve the ammunition problem with unmanned aerial vehicles, but the air defense systems sent by Western countries are destroying all unmanned aerial vehicles. Moscow's first target was to attack Ukrainian infrastructure facilities with drones. However, the deployment of air defense systems in critical areas caused the Russians to start using these unmanned aerial vehicles on the front line. On the other hand, unmanned aerial vehicles can be destroyed even by old air defense systems. For this reason, Russian army has reduced its attacks with unmanned aerial vehicles. 
Currently, Russia carries out most of its missile strikes with Soviet-made missiles. Despite the high explosiveness of these missiles, the accuracy rate is quite low. Therefore, Moscow made deals to purchase a large number of drones from Iran. In this process, all attacks by unmanned aerial vehicles cannot be stopped. No air defense system in the world can destroy 1,000 missiles fired at the same time, because air defense systems and defense rockets need to be reloaded into the system. Some of the attacks made in this process can be prevented by air defense systems. However, if the new air defense systems reach Ukrainian territory, I think that all attacks on critical areas will be stopped, because air defense systems will primarily serve to protect critical areas. It is thought that unmanned aerial vehicles or missiles escaping from air defense systems will hit areas far from critical points. While attacks on Russian industrial areas continue, it is known that Ukrainian army also attacked the Shastia region near Luizig. It has been confirmed that the Shastia region has been attacked by HIMARS systems. As a result of the hit of three HIMARS missiles in the region, a large number of Russian military equipment was destroyed. It is also known that many Russian personnel in the region were neutralized by the effect of the explosion. Ukrainian General Starf announced that 20 areas on the Eastern Front were cleared of Russians. In the last 24 hours, units of Ukrainian armed forces have repelled the Russians in more than 20 areas in Luhansk Oblast, such as Plashkinka, Shervan Apopivka, Bylo Horivka, Bakhmut, Apit and Zelenopilia, Andreevka, Marinka. Rocket forces and artillery units of Ukrainian armed forces struck five clusters of Russian military personnel, a command post, and an enemy ammunition storage point. According to the statements made, Russian army lost 480 soldiers in one day. The number of casualties of Russian army reached 98,500. In addition, Russian army lost seven tanks, eight armored vehicles, three artillery systems, 15 fuel oil tankers, and six engineering equipment. After the clashes continued, Russian President Putin held a meeting with his generals. The Kremlin said Putin spent most of Friday at Special Military Operation Headquarters. In the photos released after the meeting, Putin is seen with Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu and Chief of General Star Valery Gerasimov. The meeting took place at a time when Ukraine voiced allegations that Moscow was preparing to unleash a new wave of aggression after a series of defeats. Ukrainian intelligence said that Putin is preparing to launch a major operation in Kiev. For this reason, shipments to Ukraine reached record numbers. In the morning today, President of Ukraine Zelensky expressed that they are ready for any future attack. The statements made greatly increase the intensity of the clashes at the front. On the other hand, Russian tanks began to be destroyed one after another. A video posted on Ukrainian social media accounts shows a Russian T-72B tank advancing on the move, firing at a target and hitting at least one Ukrainian mine. At 20 seconds of the video, the tank continues to move, despite visibly passing over a mine and an explosion. Dirt, stones and dust can be seen gushing out around the vehicle and as a result it can be clearly observed that parts of the tank are visibly damaged. The tank had to stop shortly after the explosion and personnel inside the tank began to flee. After the explosions, it is seen that three Russian armored vehicles and one more heavy battle tank were hit by a mine. After the explosions, there was no loss of life in Russian army. However, due to mines, Russian armored vehicles were heavily damaged and became unusable. Russian soldiers started to flee towards Russian defense line, leaving the armored vehicles in the area. The intensity of the conflict continues to increase. We have come to the end of another video. We will continue to report the events in the coming hours to you quickly and accurately. We continue to inform you objectively about the events. You can like the videos to support us. You can also subscribe to the channel to make it easier to follow new videos. I wish you all happy days. See you.